of the table, no one will be seated during the first seven minutes. <laughs> the last 12 minutes. Two minutes in the middle of scene three. And the third, ninth, and thirteenth minutes of the intermission. <laughs> it's that scary. supposed to run a bakery. Well, you buy a whole lot of flour, you find a place with an oven. Oh, shut you your trap, <laughs> smartass. Your flip tongue I don't need. What I need is employees who show up even remotely near opening. I need real life customers, not loonies and off from the street. Get away from my door! Uh, maybe it's our location. Six in Hennepin is a prime location. <laughs> or a bakery? Let me tell you, Mr. Shortman, a baked good is the last thing people pick up on 6th and Hennepin. <laughs> well, nobody's going to pick up anything if Benton doesn't grace us with you. Oh. oh, it's like a curse. I say his name and boom. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Shortman. Can I help you? You want to help me throw yourself under a number six? Well, it's just I was having some minor surgery. You want some major surgery? I'm going to rip your liver out if I have to say this again. Get your ass here on time. Well, I was up all night studying for my locksmith exam. Screw the locksmith! Oh, God, what an ugly image. <laughs> you shut up again. You, my partner, you're smart. Get back to work, both of you, before I kick your butts out into the street. What if we quit? Quit? Oh, be my guests. But of course, if you quit, I can't allow you to live in the back room anymore. And you won't be getting any more free bread. And no fresh straw to sleep on? How does that sound, huh? <laughs> Anybody quitting now? I thought so. Now move it! You start on tomorrow's croissants, and Benton is supposed to be watching the main oven in the basement. So watch! Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs> what if we quit? What if we quit? <laughs> Boy, I love myself. I really do. He's such a wiener. <laughs> you know, Ben, he's right. We only make a dollar thirty-five here an hour. We're too poor to break away. He's got us trapped. Well, I'm not trapped. I'm almost through locksmith school. Just two more months, and then I'll be the best damn locksmith in this room. You know, Ben, I don't know how you can afford to go to that school on what we make here. Well, I've learned to cut out a lot of things, like entertainment, shelter, food, clothing, medicine, <laughs> and I'm still giving blood. Are you still doing that once a day? No, I kept fainting on the way home from the blood bank. Yesterday I passed out in front of Dayton's. Oh, that's terrible. Well, not really. When I came to, my lunchbox was full of change. <laughs> <laughs> but, Rene, if you really want to see something, take a look at this. Looks like a slice of Oscar Mayer luncheon meat. That's part of my brain. <laughs> No, really. See, the people at the blood bank knew I needed some extra money. So they sent me to this place called Organ World? <laughs> House of Organs? Something like that. Anyways, they took a sample of my brain and ran some tests on it for research or something. And they're going to call me in a week and let me know if they found anything. <laughs> <laughs> me, huh? <laughs> Sounds kind of weird, Benton. Hey, they paid big. 
big money for this little slice of bread. How much? Forty-three dollars. Well, well, well. What do we got here? Well, Mr. Short can give me that money. This money should just about cover the pastries you ruined running in here a moment ago. That's not fair. Oh, I guess you're right. Here's a dollar, Benton. Go buy some clear so. Oh, well, Mr. Short, can I <laughs> Don't work? give me butts. Let's move it. And save your lunch for later. That's my brain. Oh, really? I was wondering where you kept it. <laughs> <laughs> now move it! I, I don't need this. I got lots of opportunities to come my way. lower than the minimum. They're complaining. It's very training. They would rather be out shirking in the streets spreading sugar salt as cinnamon. Why do I work these hours? Where is my self-respect? Here I'm arranging flowers working for that stupid jerk. Oh, miss! Sir, may save a place? Can I help you? Yes, we're new in town and we'd like to try a sample of your bread. Well, okay. What a nice young gal, isn't she, Kent? Very nice, Trish. Oh. <laughs> Just like the rest of Minneapolis, so nice. nice. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, this does look nice, doesn't it? It tastes like shit, full of dirt and grit. It really is. I want to spit on the healthy stay in business minute drag. What kind of dump like is this man being at? Oh, oh, honey, do yourself a favor. I mean it. Get yourself a decent job someplace. Really, miss, where's your pride? Come on, Trish, let's go someplace nice. Oh, you know it, Kent. Hey, let's try that Ember's place. <laughs> from the brain surgery. Oh, man. I'm really worried about you. You know, maybe you should just take the rest of the day off. I have that! If I don't have enough trouble with you two, more complaint letters. This one's from the Audubon Society, asking about all the dead birds around our dumpster. <laughs> and this one is from that Greek restaurant next door, the one with the dead sheep on the rotating barbecue. They're complaining about the smell from our place. Huh. Talk about calling the cattle black. Huh. Oh, and this one. Oh, this is the killer. It's from my stupid brother in Moorhead. His equally stupid daughter is going to be living in Minneapolis for a few stupid months. I'm not supposed to give her a job. Why'd you get that little simple job, huh? Is that me and me block hit around here cluttering up the place? Well, she's coming here tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to give her a swift kick right in her butt all the way back to Moorhead. Hi, Uncle Bud. I came early. Oh, who is that? It's my little snuggabugs. How's my favorite little funny face in the whole wide world? Oh, Kitty, you surprised your Uncle Bud. Did I? Well, I came early. I know, you just said that. Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Bud. I, well, I guess I'm a little bit nervous. It's just that there's so many tall buildings and so many people of diverse ethnic origin. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you introduce me, Uncle Bud? Uh, to them? No. Hey, Shark, and I'm here from Acme Bakery Supply. We need this one, huh? Uh, ben, where's the inventory list? I forgot to take the inventory, Mr. Shorkin. Of course you forgot. Sheesh, if your head wasn't screwed, not, I put... <laughs> Never mind, 
to put myself. Come on down to the basement and take a look at the stock room. Renee, get your flashlight and hold it for us. Hurry up, you dimble Hold the flashlight, steady. This ain't a movie premiere. God damn it. God damn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uncle Clyde can be a little bit rough at times. <laughs> You know, I think way down deep he's still rough, but not as rough. Oh, don't mind me. I'm probably not making any sense. It's just that I'm finally here. Well, not here, but, but so close to there where I've always dreamt of being. Oh. 
You're supposed to be watching the main of a new night check in there! Yeah, did he tell you that? Everything's burnt for your recognition down there! Oh, burnt, man! Look at this! Look at the knife as a that is a law and order Yeah, a law and order one! Uncle Bud, Ben was showing me around the bakery! Oh, that that's really nice. Well, I'm gonna show my fist around his face! Come here. <laughs> Bratton. <laughs> Kill! You're gonna stay here until we replace all this burnt bread. That'll take all night. Uh, oh, no, I'll help you, baby. Don't help you, no, no, you too. Go downstairs and freshen up or something. Freshen up. Maybe then you'll learn something about concentrating on the job. Why you're still got a job to concentrate on. <laughs> And that was Earl Garner's Mystic with Bobby Short at the piano. It's 1.30 here in the Twin Cities, and we'll be playing request all evening here on KDOZ, where we cut music that makes your life more like a dentist's office. <laughs> <laughs> And that was Earl Garner's Misty with Sandra Young providing the vocals. It's 3.20 here in the Twin Cities. They play Elmore's 317, the Fargo Morgan, 312, and Luke Superior, 20 and 309. <laughs> And that was Earl Garner's Misty with her own car conducting the early film night. And that was Earl Garner's Misty with her own car conducting the early film night. It's 5.30 in the Twin Cities and we've got a request here. This is the Monk's Choir at St. Benedict's of the Hall singing Earl Garner's <laughs> Well, I got it done. I don't know how, but I did it. We don't open for another two hours. It's too late to go to bed. I think I'll go down to the park and feed the ducks. Here, duck, duck, duck. Here, duck, duck. Oh. <laughs> Here, eat this. <laughs> why does this always happen? I know why, mister. Why? Because you fed him that shortcut spread. Hey, this bread's OK. Give me a break, mister. My mom like how, you know, sometimes when they bake it and stuff, all sorts of weird junk gets in there and... Mister, you, you got a Ziploc in that one right there. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's a good thing Mr. Shorkin didn't see this. He... Wait a minute. Hmm. Where's the brain? That's bullshit, mister. <laughs> Red don't got no brain. Oh, it's got to be in here. Hey, quit throwing that shit on the ground. I've got to find it. before they open. Oh, this is terrible. Excuse me, sir, do you know what time it is? It's time you should be getting back to work, young fella. They opened over an hour ago. An hour? Oh, now I am dead. Mr. Jorkin will kill me. What if somebody bought that bread with the... Yee. What will I say about my brain in the bread? He'll be annoyed. I'll be unemployed. Or dead. Maybe he'll be calm. No, probably not. The bread I brewed is certainly food for thought. <laughs> Just relax, catch my breath, go on in, welcome death. No, 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 I'm sure everything is normal. Suspicious. Boy, this great. It's simply great. A little gray, but what the hey, it's great. I don't believe this. Boy, this is delicious bread. I'm creeping out from it, the bread. I should have been cautious. You look nauseous. Boy, this bread is real too sweet. The grayish dots help the flavor lots. It's neat. Does 
does it matter that the banter is full of matter from the inside of my nut? Oh, yeah. If I tell, he's gonna yell like hell. It's selling well. But, 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 Mr. Shortcut! All right, baby. This is your brainchild. Tell me, would you put that bread to make it so? It was late last night, sir, and I was getting real hard. It's Carla from the Reader. We need her to review us. We'll call her in her column. And think of all the business it'll do us. And all the brightness I can read. And one croissant, a piece of pie. Sunday's off, and I won't poke you with a sharp stick anymore. <laughs> oh, and here, here's that money I mistakenly took from you yesterday. Oh, I'm so sorry. And Ben, Ben, please, make that bread. <laughs> oh, Ben, I just hate to see Uncle Bob this way. I'm this way. <laughs> Isn't there anything you can do? No, I don't think so, Kitty. You know, it would make me very happy if you could bake some more of that delicious bread. <laughs> It would? <laughs> well, for you, I'll do it. Oh, Ben. Oh, Kitty. Oh, that's my boy. 
Oh, you remind me of the son that I probably have somewhere. <laughs> Kitty, get your sweater. I'm taking you off to dinner. A celebration dinner someplace fancy like Perkins. <laughs> Renee, get your coat. I'm taking you off to dinner, too. Wait a minute. You're taking me out to dinner? You're right. That does sound too weird. You can wait in a car. I'll bring out a doggy bag or something. <laughs> Mr. Shortkin? Before you go, sir, I have a very serious question I want to ask you. Oh, you can ask me anything you want, young man, because you're a good boy. You're a nice boy who's kind and generous and does good things for people. And who's a good person? Can I go out with Kitty? Can you go out with Kitty? In your dreams, Runt. Yeah. Well, this is batch number three. Let's give it the old taste test. Oh, what am I going to do? There's no way I can duplicate that recipe without the slice of brain. Oh, why did I say I'd do this? If only Kitty hadn't given me that look of hers. <laughs> the one where she uses both of her eyes. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sharpen's going to kill me. I know he will. No, i got to relax. Uh, get a breath of fresh air. That'll do it. X-Tree, x, -tree, x -tree, read all about it! Bakery owner vows to kill employee if he doesn't come up with more delicious bread! <laughs> x three, x three. Ah! What will I say when he sees that I fail? I'll be accused, bruised and abused, and jailed. He'll hunt me down, looking to kill. Where will I hide? Maybe I'll try. Brazil. No, try again, mix the dough, count to ten. One, two, three, four. <laughs> well, I'll give it one more try. Blah, blah, blah. 
la la Mark Rosen. La 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 stuck my nose in. Charming Fakery, la la fame, Fenton la la is his name from the Queen of Gabs. The Dell to Borrow, the Babs. Now, Ben, because of that brother and Flanagan's column, we're completely sold out today. But now we got to triple our output. And since it's such a big order, I'm going to stay here and give you a hand, huh? Well, Mr. Shortman, you know the rules, sir. I work alone with the door locked. If you want any bread, that's the way it's got to be. And why are you wearing that jacket? <laughs> because Paula Waldemar's coming in today, and I want to impress her. What do you think? It looks like wallpaper from the bathroom of a steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> and how? <laughs> this week I visited Chorkin's Bakery, located at 6th and Hennepin. And though something to remind us and reminded me of the bathroom of a steakhouse, I must give three huzzahs to this joyous little eatery. The bread has elan, with just a smidgen of eclair. It's full of sugar sequoia, joie de vivre, and a casserole serole. <laughs> well, it's four stars for Shorkin's kids. Now trust me on this, because I'm a critic. And so I know more than you. <laughs> <laughs> Another week of bang up business. Boy, if it keeps up like this, I'll be able to swing that bitchin' mobile home I've always wanted. <laughs> but now, we gotta increase her output. Have I ten thousand? No! No! What do you mean, no? No more bread. Unless I can go out with Kitty. Never. There goes that bitchin' mobile home. <laughs> <laughs> what? Date her all you want. I mean, relatives come and go, but a mobile home is forever. <laughs> this week's Mr. Skyway is Benton Twin. Head baker at Shorkins on 6th and Hennepin. And the man responsible for the bread that has all of Minneapolis talking. His turn-ons, sunsets, puppies, and one of the girls I work with. Oh, Benton! His turn-offs, rainy days, people who smoke, and sleeping on straw. Congratulations, Mr. Skyway. You will receive a free turtle wax treatment and six cans of 30 weight motor oil. Isn't that wonderful? Now, I relax, never toil. Got the wax and some oil. Though I don't have a car yet. I'm starting to climb up and out of the grind. No more shopping at Target. And I owe it to you for making it all come true. The bad times are through and I'm starting to climb. All right, stand back here for ambivalence, okay? Okay. All right, you people, come on, let's concentrate and get this right, for Christ's sake. I'm paying these people an Armenian's leg. Okay, places, everybody, places! Okay, um, now this time I really want you to feel it, all right? Feel it. I want an energy. I want you to do it orange, okay? Orange. Do orange. it orange. Uh, ben? Ben, what, what, what are you doing with that bread? I think we should have some bread in the commercial. Well, let me have it then, huh? No! <laughs> Nobody holds this bread but me. <laughs> Well, who died and made you doughboy? <laughs> Come on, you guys, we're wasting valuable time here. Okay, um, slate it, Robin. You slate it again. I will! Sharkin's Bakery, take 19! And action. Ah. Hi there, this is Elvin Bud Sharkin of Sharkin's Bakery, asking you to come on down to Six and Hennepin and try some of our delicious bread. Yum! That is good bread. <laughs> Our experienced and courteous staff will make your visit to Shorkins a uniquely pleasurable shopping experience. May I be of some help, madam? <laughs> so come on down to Shorkins, where the black things in the bread aren't flies anymore. They're raisins now. <laughs> I can't. I have to get the camera back before my mother finds out that I took it. <laughs> That's what I get for going non-union. How much do I owe you kids? Well, what do you think? 
<laughs> How much have I been? It says it right in the back of the book here. Seven dollars. Seven dollars? Here, I'll make it five even. Five? Oh, God, let's go to Purple Rain! Yeah, come on! <laughs> hey, Reedy, why don't you make a list of all the bank deposits for this week and call up Prince and tell him to pick up the day's receipts. Why don't you do it? Because I'm going to be on that good company show this afternoon. No. <laughs> going to rap with Sharon, that little minx. <laughs> See if I can get her back to the mobile home for a quick shower and then some bowling. <laughs> Wish me luck! Good luck, Uncle Bud! Ernie, could you leave Kitty and I alone for a few minutes? And he said yes. Oh, would you bowl too? <laughs> no. <laughs> he said we could, you and I, we could go out together. Oh, Ben, that's wonderful. Uh huh. I can't. Why not? Well, I, I have to ask first. Who? Kitty? Tad! Kitty, I came here as soon as I could. How's my poor, sad little sweetie, huh? You have a boyfriend? No, it's my brother, Tad. Hey there, sport, put it there. Oh, hi, here for a visit? <laughs> Hell no, I'm here to work. I'm the new weatherman at Channel 9. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping a close eye on my poor little sister here. Well, I'll let you two talk, and Kitty, I'll pick you up at 7. For what? Oh, just a little date. Ooh, sorry, sport, no. <laughs> what do you mean, no? I mean, uh-uh. No way, forget it, drop the thought, Shorty. No, Kitty won't be dating anyone for quite some time. Well, who are you to say that? I'll tell you, Buster. I'm her brother, and I know my little sister. I mean, come on, let's face it, she's really not that much to get excited about. I mean, look at her. Her eyes are too close together, her teeth are crooked at the bottom. There's not much up front, that's for sure. I mean, all in all, she's damn plain. And when all this settles into place, she's going to be class A hag material, aren't you, honey? <laughs> and when that happens, you'll drop her like a rotten sock, and I don't want to see my little baby sister hurt that way. Thank you, Tad, but Ben is very nice. Hey, Kitty, they're all nice when they want to get into your pantyhose. You Tad. remember that stuff, please? Tad! Now go on downstairs and wash your face. Your pores are filled with grease and dirt. <laughs> and you hurry back up and I'll take you out for Mr. Misty, okay, Sue? Mr. Misty, okay. I'm sorry, Ben. <laughs> You're a real creep, you know that, Tad? Oh, come on, Ben, I know you don't really mean that. You're just jealous, that's all. Oh, jealous, right. Hey, I get it all the time. Well, guys who got shafted in the looks department ragging on me because, well, I'm so damn good looking. <laughs> I mean, here's an interesting fact. You know, in some Western societies, you would have been left on the side of a hill at birth. How about that, huh, bud? <clears throat> oh, hey, lunch next week. Get it. I'll put it on the plastic. <laughs> damn, it's tough. Don't blame me if you're hideous. Like my sister Kitty is, <laughs> and most of the city is. That's just the way it goes. Don't hate me because I'm graceful, and my teeth, they neatly spaceful. Well, you're stuck with a faceful of six and blemish nose. I have to suffer in reverse. There's nothing tougher than my curse, oh. <laughs> I'm too handsome to be real. And sometimes it gets kind of lonely. 
being the one and only great looking guy for miles. Oh, I'm too handsome, too genteel. I demand some comparison to Adonis. When I meet the mirror, I hear a voice so clearer. You're too handsome to be real. I sent in a personal ad to keep me from feeling alone. But then I saw an ad that got me hot. Oh, damn! I answered my own in all my eyes. Miles, you eat your heart out, huh? <laughs> da -da 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 Who's pretty? Who's pretty? You are your big lug. <laughs> da -da 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 you know, you're so vain, you probably think this song is about you. Well, it is. I love you. I really mean it. And too handsome, much too handsome, too damn handsome. What a great world this would be if man were created in my image. To be me. I mean, in comes his poster child for the Hitler youth. <laughs> that does it. If I can't get a date with Kitty, I'm gonna go get drunk. Yeah. Do I have to make a reservation for a bar? <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll just go down the block to that Moby Dick's place. I wonder if it's anything like the book. <laughs> Damn. Well, I wouldn't get to get rid of that brother. Benton, what's happening to you? God, I've never heard him raise his voice like that before. Talking about getting rid of someone. Oh, my God. He took his Indiana Jones lunchbox to Moby Dick's. They'll kill him. Sunny all afternoon, great day for tanning, especially if you got a hunk of a bod like mine. <laughs> so for Channel Orange Weather Watch Cam Action Center, this is the really good looking Tad Withers. Ciao! And off the air. Thank you, Tad. Nice job. Hey bud, you're right. <laughs> Tad, sweetie. As station manager, I feel I have a few things to go over with you. I don't understand, Marcy. Well, I think you know what I'm talking about. Number one, we do not sign off the weather with chow. Number two, we do not refer to ourselves as the Channel 9 weather stud. <laughs> and number three, Tad, I swear I'll rip your face off if I ever again catch you putting your phone number up on the Doppler radar screen. <laughs> you know, Mars, you're assertive. I really like that in a gal. Stop it, Tad. And number four, no more personal phone calls in the studio. Love you, Mars. <laughs> Eat it, Tad. <laughs> Hello there. This is the really good-looking Tad Withers. Whose pleasure is this? Tad, Tad, you've got to help me. Uh, I'm at Sharpie's Bakery in bed and is trying to take advantage of me. Damn, that poor little guy must be desperate. If he has his way with me, oh, think of the children. Yuck. Oh, no. <laughs> can you hold him up? I'll get there as soon as I can, all right? And don't let him bruise your face. That's all you need. Taxi, taxi! Hang on, 
Here's an autographed 8x10 for your trouble. Show the fucking 8x10 up your ass! <laughs> late by tens are expensive. <laughs> now I've totally forgotten why I came here. <laughs> oh, Kitty! <laughs> Kitty, are you here? Kitty? Must be downstairs. They stole my goddamn lunchbox. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> but at least I had enough pina coladas to give me strength to come back here and find old Taddy and give him a piece of my kitty. Kitty, are you here? Damon, I can't be walking around in the dark like this. I, I could fall and disfigure myself. <laughs> okay, somebody's over there. Who's there, huh? doing on the floor. I've got to get the bread ready for tomorrow. I've got to straighten up and get the bread ready and, and fly right. Get the bread and get it. Oh, what is this? It's Tad! <laughs> and he's dead! Oh, he's dead! I know he's dead! He could, I didn't, oh, 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 what happened here? You killed him. <laughs> I killed him! I killed him! I... Uh, uh, you talked! You have a mouth! What are you talking about, huh? How come you didn't talk before? Did you talk your first couple of days? <laughs> I had to pick him up, man. <laughs> and then you saw? I saw you come in drunk off your butt, and this guy was here and, well, use your imagination. <laughs> I can't remember anything. I've got to turn myself in to the police. Oh, well, say what? Did he accidentally kill the guy you hated because he wouldn't let you date his hot little sister? You better pack your suitcase if you tell him that story. Because you'll be making a move to a nice big hotel in Stillwater permanently. You're right. Okay. Uh, what do I do with Tad? You got a dumpster? Yeah. Oh, but the Audubon Society might find him. <laughs> the freezer. There's a big old walk-in freezer downstairs. I could put him in there. Yeah, that would he'll keep. No telltale smell you away. Oh, that's disgusting. Hey, it's your murder. You clean it up. My murder? My murder? Oh, let me ask you something. First you helped me make all this wonderful bread, and now you're helping me cover up a murder. What's in this for you? For me? Nothing, baby. I'm a loaf of bread. What do I need? You see, I'm here because you're the one who needs. Me? What do I need? Oh, don't make me laugh, Brent. You ain't got no time to go. Oh, look at the time I live in the eye. Well, I got a room in back I live in. Live inside. Ooh, you don't need. Nice clothes. You can shut the door and 
came on too long. All my friends shop in Cambridge. And that's wrong. Ooh, buy some tweets. Oh, I just usually wear this all the time. Leave some all out there waiting for you to want it in a You mentioned me helping you. I thought you didn't need anything. checked out the stock room for inventory. And guess what? We're not out of anything. The stock room was completely full. Now you tell me, how is it we sold over 12,000 loaves of bread in the last two weeks and haven't even used one cup of flour? Answer that, Benton. Benton, I had the strangest dream last night. It was about my brother, Tad, and he was having an argument with some guy, a, a short guy with brown hair, and the short guy was mean to Tad and made him go into this house, and, and I walked up to it, and on the front door it said, Frigid air? What do you think that means, Benton? Benton, I have to talk to you. I was in the bakery last night and I overheard you talking to someone about getting rid of Kitty's brother's head. Well, just say something should happen to him. I shouldn't tell anyone what I heard, right? Maybe I should do it yeah. and get out of all of this mess and the dirt. Pursue it, uh -huh. and a little sweet success wouldn't hurt. Before I make the decision, yeah. one point should be discussed. Can I trust what's under that crust? I don't know, this just doesn't feel well, right. Let me ask you one question Do you think Kitty will wait for you while you serve your manslaughter wrap? Huh? You're right. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah. I'm sitting pretty. I've been eating kitty because I, I got needs. Yeah. 
get me say Please make the cheesecake and please take the cheesecake uptown Don't make the pound cake too much cause it's black and not brown We've got orders to fill, people to fill Here's Peter's Grill and the Green Mill Another day at the bakery If you want a heart, why don't you take Taz? My heart loves Taz. That may be your idea of love, but it's not mine. Look, about this heart thing, I've been thinking. Hey, that's funny. I've been doing some thinking, too. I've had a great idea. A real fun maker. Pet buns. Sounds like pet rocks. Same idea, only better. How about the buns? Keep the other one. Maybe we can find somebody to distribute that for us. We'll put out a hundred thousand at a Jastarki. Five bucks a shot. We'll clean up. Okay, that is a good idea. Let's see, five bucks times one hundred thousand. What were we about to say a minute ago? I forget. Are you calling me? Another day at the bakery. Laughing and singing. Registering. Tell me if you're claiming. You're claiming. And I'm. You said it, Barbara. Another day at the bakery. Another day, another week, another month, and then another day at the bakery. Please roll again. Well, another good work day, ladies. Here's a fifty-dollar bill. Go to Murray's. Thanking me for hustle down there and get me a butter knife steak. Now move it. Jeez. I'm gonna count the change. You're a real gentleman, Shorten. Thank you, Twint. I sent the women away so you and I could, could have a sit down together. I've asked you about the stock room, haven't I? The stock room that never empties. Uh, I think if you take a closer look down there, sir. I did take a closer look, and what do you think I found? I don't know. How about this? An eight by ten of my nephew, the weather boy, torn in half. I wonder who did that, huh? Mr. Shorten. Surely you aren't suggesting I had anything to do with Tad's death disappearance. No, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm knowing it. I don't need to bring in the amazing Chris King to find out what's going on in your mind. Murder! <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> Hello? Sharon! Is Steve there? She can talk, right? Oh, look, I hope someone takes a picture. Any ideas? If this guy gets to the cops, you might as well forward your mail to death row. I say finish him off with this. Do I have to? Have you ever seen an electric chair up close? Why did you sweat it? And I don't know if you get it. Oh, I got a snip. For your chores. That's the way it stays. But it can be so slaying. Yours. The bakery? Mine? I don't know. Oh, come on, wake up, Benton. Unless you do right now, nothing's gonna change. You'll keep doing all the work, and you'll keep taking all that credit. You're right. I keep saying I want to change my life. Well, here it goes. What? Well, Sharon, uh, don't get hysterical. What are you talking about? Look behind me. What? Uh... <laughs> ah! 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 Ah!
Across the street. It could have been rained. Look, I gotta, I gotta make a quick phone call. Why don't I meet you in an hour at the arcade lanes? Right. I bring the cheese whiz. Ta. <laughs> so, thought you'd get all smart shorken, did you, huh? Stock room, a torn up photograph, and a lock on the freezer door. It's been jammed. I wonder if Mr. Future Locksmith of America had anything to do with that, huh? Well, I'm sure the police will be interested in taking a peek into that freezer! Hello! Yes, I'd like to report a murder. Get it, boys. What? What? Oh! Ah! Ah! Instead, I should have said, I'm dead. <laughs> He you cashed in his chips, and you're lucky too. He knew everything, including Frosty the Snowman downstairs. Vince, are you in there? No! Oh, no, no. Look, I'll get rid of Shorten, you get rid of Renee. I think I can manage that. Oh, God, I know how both you are. <laughs> Benton? Benton? Maybe he's downstairs. Maybe it's better that he's not here. When are we going to leave this note? Oh, Ben. We could have had a wonderful future together if only you would have chosen me. Sometimes I sit for hours and daydream what our life together would be like. In a little pew's house with a little brown lawn and a piggy fence with most of the pigs. God, in debt for life, with the mortgage signed, a little pew's house in my mind. We find our happy home in a sun. 
chance. Better leave it where he won't miss it. It's getting awfully crowded in that freezer. Whatever he wanted. She didn't say. Oh, uh, the first order of pet buns are ready. The distributor said they'll be in Byerly's by Thursday. You're not a day too soon. <laughs> I'll be right with you. Shortkin. That's right, Pee Wee. I'm Bud's ex. And, uh, just what might your name be? Uh, Benton Twint. Over there, Burton. Shake as you please. Share the disease, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Shortkin never said anything about a wife? Oh, Christ, of course you didn't. Say, I think I need a little nasal spray. Yeah, all this flurry is blocking up my tubes. You want to snort? Uh, no. Good. Look, I'm hooked on this shit. Don't you get started. Right. Oh. <laughs> so, hunting. Burton. What else? Oh. Now look, me and Bud, we was married back in July of 1958. That's over 26 years ago for one week. You divorced after one week? Divorced? Why, ass? It was for reasons of health, if you received my meaning. It was a sex. We had deadly sex. Sex that could have resulted in death. Well, what can I say? Bud's a dynamo, and uh, I've been known to rearrange the furniture if you follow. Hunting, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I got stories I could straighten even that hair here. I really don't need to hear your story. We spent one night in a Motel 6 in Keokuk, Iowa. Woo! The next day, they closed the room we stayed in. Never opened it again. You want to know why? I... Why? I ain't gonna tell you. No, but I don't want to scar you mentally. <laughs> oh, but I decided to call it quits after that night. Cut off all communication. So, what a surprise it was when after 26 years he calls me four days ago out of the blue and tells me to get my fanny up here. Something weird's going on, he says. You gotta get up here, he says. <laughs> well, I never. Never in all the week we was married. No, no, I never heard that guy that scared. On the phone, he was scared. So, where is he? Who? Freaking Santa Claus, who do you think? Oh, Mr. Shorkin? He just stiffed, stepped out. Till when? Christmas. I can wait. Of next year. I can wait. Look, buddy told me to be here, I'll be here. I won't get in your way, I'll just uh, poke around a little. <laughs> No pun intended. Hey, take a little look down in that basement of yours, maybe, huh? Oh, Shortage Bakery. Oh, Kitty. Yes, I want to talk to you, too. Come right over. Okay. Oh, by the way, your Aunt Bunny is here? Yeah, I thought so. Okay, see you soon. Okay, Bunny, whatever your name is, your niece Kitty's never heard of you. How do I know you are who you say? You, you could be some trollop off the street just trying to take advantage of Mr. Shurkin's success. I bet you don't even know Mr. Shurkin. You're all bunting, bunting, bunting. <laughs> what? I got pictures from that motel number six. All these photographs. Yep, I got pictures and memories from one week of mere fatal wedded bliss. Believe me, I know Bud Shurkin. From Boston, in his teeth, to the stains underneath his pits. It was 
Oh, but I'm sure I'll find out who it is tonight. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't look. Oh, but I have to so I can thank him. You know, ever since Tad disappeared, I, I feel like a great weight has been lifted off my hair. I'm, I'm suddenly free to try anything with no interference. Free to do anything. Experiment. Experiment? I don't get it. Tough as nails, don't forget. I've done everything I haven't. I ain't done yet. Grabbing all the life I can get. Making the boy shiver and sweat. Cause I'm <laughs> Kitty. Stairs to think. 
That should take a while. Yeah. I will play that. <laughs> Would it be this darn whip? Who said that? Right here. You're bread! <laughs> and you're human, that's one right for each of us. You should see, Corbett, he says you stole his heart. Well, I didn't mean to. I'm Turning out this way. No, no, things are turning out just fine. You want to hear the wind? Well, yes. Could I have it, please? It's right over here. Just come get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chimera Theater. <laughs> I want to die here, where everything else does. <laughs> oh, Kitty. What will I do without you? Be alone. <laughs> Whole. 
Now you just want to be my friend. Now you just want to help me. All this crap about a heart. Lies, lies, lies. Except a bit about the heart. But you screwed that deal up there. All I wanted was a good heart. Taz was no good when he was shulkins. But please, yours would have been perfect. But you wouldn't let me take it, would you? No! You do a bit. Because now, there's only one heart left. Mine? Thank you. 